time. We're shaking hands, kissing babies, getting ready to start this game. The last two games of the group stage happening tonight, and we're going to be watching along. See, Quinn was in the chat earlier. Uh, FS2 for United States viewers. We'll be able to catch some games there. Uh, taking a look. I've got some dropped frames. Let's see what that does. Aha. Okay, I think this should look a little smoother to everybody. How's everybody doing out there? Doing good? Are we surviving? I have some things to update here. Today we have, for our first game, Panama and Cuba. Let's see here how we can get this rolling. I believe I do this. Mm, 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 mm. Hmm. Panama. Let's get your logo in there. And I think Panama is actually wearing red tonight. And Cuba is wearing white. All right, I believe that's correct. Let's fix our scores, guys. I'm sorry that this is a little half cocked. Um, just got the kids down to bed, so rushing over here to enjoy my time with you guys here on the stream. How's it look? Does it look okay to you guys? Is the quality okay? I keep getting error messages, but looking at the live streams when I pop it up on my own, it appears to be okay. So I don't know what the, I don't know why YouTube is giving me phantom notifications. Okay, now we got to update the roller at the bottom for you guys. Get you the results for today. The game has kicked off. Cuba's wearing white with blue shorts. Panama in all red. And these last two games are going to be interesting. I think both of them could go either way. Uh, Cuba, very talented. Panama, very talented. Um, Canada and uh, Nicaragua is going to be a very good game to close out the night, too. Uh, the entire group has a lot to play for. Nobody's safe. Nobody's guaranteed uh, anything that they have right now. With the exception of, I think Panama actually is locked into first. So even if they lose to Cuba, Panama has first place secured. They're the only team going into today that they're uh they were locked up in, in their position without any chance of change. So that was uh that was kind of the only lock, but the rest of this group is so far in the air, anything could happen. Okay, I think I fixed my overlay so you guys can actually see it. I'm going to mute myself so you don't have to listen to all my clicky clacks as I update the scores here. Well, first, let's review them. So today opened up with the Dominican Republic against Trinidad and Tobago. And the Dominican thumped Trinidad 11 to 1, which is the highest total by a team so far this tournament. In a 12 goal, 12 goal game, which I believe is our highest scoring match total. Or no. I take that back. I think the Mexico-Haiti uh, game is still the highest scoring game of the tournament so far. Guatemala was down 3 to nothing against the United States of America and came back and tied the game 3-3. Three to three. So Guatemala secured first place with that. Even with the Dominicans' demonstrative win over Trinidad, they only get second place. And the United States appears to be a lock for uh, one of the best third place slots. In fact, not appears. They they are. 
They are. Even if Nicaragua or Canada wins today, because Suriname only had three points as a third place team in Group A, uh, that will not be enough. With the United States having four, and then whatever happens in Group C, or excuse me, Group B, uh, could decide not only who goes forward in Group B, but if Suriname stays alive. Technically, Suriname's still in it to move forward. So, speaking of Suriname, they played in the next game against Haiti, and they won four to nothing. That's their uh, three points of the tournament so far for the group stage as we wrap things up today. Costa Rica handles Mexico 4-2. to two. That game I did not get to watch, and I only caught half of the Suriname-Haiti game, unfortunately. Uh, so we're keeping an eye on the rest of that, but uh, I'll, I'll try and find some highlights at some point, and we can watch through it uh, and react to it. I can't air it, of course, but you guys get the idea. Same as we have the last uh, couple nights. So we'll hang out here. I've got it on my phone again so that I'm not bogging down the internet for the stream itself to keep things smooth. Hopefully we see some friends in the in the chat again like we did yesterday, hanging out with us. And we'll just do this little watch along party thing. Uh, let me update this ticker and then we'll get right into business. Hey guys, I think I've got all the scores so far updated in the ticker. So those will be scrolling and showing results from the entire weekend. In the meantime, zero to zero still, Panama, Cuba. Just over five minutes in. This will be an interesting contest, I think. Uh, I think both these teams are pretty evenly matched. Uh, and when you think about implications to the group, Cuba coming into this game with a slight advantage over the other two teams that are playing later tonight. They have two ties for two points, whereas Panama is locked in the first. They really don't need a result. But uh, keeping an eye on it, you know, surely they're going to want to still stay sharp for the rest of the tournament. So, Let's see what that does to the strategy for those guys. What are they what are they planning? So in group A, Costa Rica and Mexico move on. Even with Mexico losing today, they had enough points to move on uh, after beating Suriname and Haiti the first two days. And uh, so they will be the second place team out of Group A. Suriname is sitting on three points. Haiti, unfortunately, was not able to pull any points out of this tournament. But uh, Suriname is watching the groups tonight with bated breath to see if they might be able to sneak in. Uh, they would need a bit of a miracle for that to happen. But then again, it's puts on crazy things happen every time that we watch this fun sport. So that's just kind of part of the deal. Panama, uh, as I said, is already locked in. Cuba sitting on two. 
and Nicaragua and Canada each sitting on a point. Uh, they tied each other, and then each of them tied Cuba. So there's a lot to play for in Group B tonight. So everybody fighting for their lives all the way to the death. If Nicaragua or Canada wins tonight, then Suriname is out. And then one of those two teams in the United States of America will round out that uh, two best third place teams to give us our quarterfinals. Guatemala with the tie today got first place in Group C. Heard a commentator on Saturday calling this the group of death. A um, little bit of foresight there because I think a lot of people slept on the Dominican Republic and they've really come to play, which is, I think, awesome. Their only blemish against Guatemala. And then uh, the Dominican at six points after today. They were locked into second. The United States fortunate to walk away with any points the way they were wrapping up their game against Guatemala. But they do sneak through and pretty much guarantee do guarantee they'll advance as one of those best third place teams. So they got a USA got a little bit of help yesterday in the sense that uh, Cuba and Nicaragua and Canada weren't able to drag points out of their matches to keep their table a little closer. And then of course, with Suriname and Haiti going into today with zero points each, you had to assume that any amount of points for the United States would put them through. I did not think they would collect points today. Uh, so I've got to admit that I was wrong there. I thought for sure they would lose to Guatemala, and I thought they'd lose by four or five goals. But they actually went out and were ahead three to nothing. But again, mismanagement of the game by uh, the team managers and just the lack of creativity in the last latter part of the second half led to their unwinding, and they only got one point. Otherwise, we would have had a three-way tie for first place on points, and I, at which point I believe we look at whoops. At which point I believe we look at goal differential as our deciding factor. So far in this game, neither team can seem to break the deadlock. Hard to say exactly what's happening to cause that. If it's both teams just fighting really hard and playing really smart uh, to create a bit of a battle here, or if it's them being uh, impatient and greedy to try and find that first goal and making some, some tactical errors, maybe a little bit of both. Nothing's really happened to test the goalkeepers just yet. We are entering the 11th minute. 11.07. Sound off in the comments. Let me know if you guys watch any of the games today. I know it's a work day for a lot of people. I know I had mine running in the background a lot of the day today. And uh, now my phone's nearly dead. In fact, I'll probably need to grab a phone charger here in a little bit. I'll do that at halftime. So we can hang out in the meantime. A lot of attacks just fizzling out right now between these two. I'm very curious about how you feel about that. Definitely an uh, interesting day today. Plenty of drama for the last day of the group. Plenty of drama. We were able to air some of the games inside of the Discord today, so we did find a workaround to be able to do that. Uh, so that's something we could try and do for you guys moving forward. It's not easy because someone's got to be near the laptop to make sure the games continue 
it's not a continuous stream from CONCACAF. They have a uh, separate link per game, which makes sense from the sense of uh, an archiving standpoint. They're, they're going to want it to be that way. So we'll see what uh, what comes from this as far as I've seen some highlight videos. It looks like it's by group, not by team or by game. So I thought it was kind of odd. And then only like five to seven minute highlights per per video. Which kind of tells me they literally only did goals and maybe some big saves, a couple here and there. But interesting, uh, I thought, from CONCACAF. Panama working in a 3-1 right now. They seem content just passing uh, around half court. They just found that penetrating pass down the line, but now the Pivo is having a really hard time retaining the ball. And it appears he drew a foul. Yes, that will be a foul. Now we got a free kick in a pretty dangerous area here against uh, Cuba. Oh, and it bounces around through the arc and eventually fizzles out the back for a goalkeeper throw. Very fast, woof, very fast pace on that ball. Again, Panama set up in the 3-1, looking for that splitting ball to the Pivo. They opt to go over the top, but Cuba's ready for it. But they can't do any more than kick it out the uh, sideline. And have to get some mate at halftime, too. Hit you for some mate. I haven't made the thumbnails and the links yet, but I do plan to do a stream again tomorrow night for the quarterfinals. Excuse me, that's Wednesday. For Wednesday night is the quarterfinals. Uh, there will be games at 2 and 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. Then the final game, of course, being at 8 p.m. And the winners of these games will decide who represents CONCACAF at the World Cup. Uh, that will lock in the four slots for the CONCACAF uh Oh, goal line save from Panama. Cuba with a great shot. The goalkeeper got a lot of it for Panama. He ran out the challenge at the top of his arc. Uh, bounced off his hand under him. But uh, luckily, a Panamanian ala had tracked back enough to be able to clear that before it got too dangerous on the goal line. So we're still scoreless at about seven and a half minutes left to go. But yes, we will be catching the 8 o'clock game. So I'm going to do my best to keep an eye on those games throughout my workday so that I can talk about them intelligently with you guys when we do the stream for the very last game and see what, uh, see what kind of conversations we can spur from that. And then, of course, the semifinals are Thursday. And those are at 8 and 10 p.m., similar to these group stages we've been watching together. So I plan on doing watch-alongs for both of those games. So we will do watch-alongs for the semifinals, uh, third place match, as well as the final. Silly giveaway there from Cuba with a wayward pass. And now Panama is working a 3-1 out of the back again. I love this stadium. You know, this stadium is actually open air. So it's nighttime there now. It's hard to tell. It looks like they're just inside of an arena, but you can kind of see the car lights. 
under the uh, the second level balcony. And that's actually all open air through there. So uh, I believe it's in the upper 90s. Oh, what a shot from Panama. The Cuban goalkeeper was ready. Good defense as well from the fixo to drive him to the outside as he was trying to shoot. Kind of made it for an awkward pat, uh, shot. Easy one for the goalkeeper for Cuba. I don't know if any of you guys follow arena soccer. Um, I don't typically talk about it too much on this channel because I prefer futsal. And that's really the only reason we don't follow it. Uh, is MLIS, which was formed last year, I believe. Maybe two years ago. This was their second year, I think. Uh, their second season. Is merging with the NISL. And way back in the day, I want to say a year and a half ago or so now, maybe a year ago, uh, we did a story here on the channel about uh, the WFL, the World Futsal League, which was announced and meant to be ran by the same ownership that ran NISL. NISL has been a mess since then. Um, there's no two ways around it. Sounds like there's been quite a bit of dysfunction. MLIS has been looking to start a women's league. NISL already has it. I think part of the reason for the merger, hey, we're having a hard time with this thing. I don't think it turned out as easy as they thought to manage a league. And on top of that, uh, you know, it's it's two lower level, two lower tier arena soccer leagues merging together to try and make themselves a little more legitimate. So there's a lot of upside to this merger. I don't know who's going to brand how um, and how that's going to work. I'm sure there's more to come, but just interesting because that ownership group for NISL was talking about futsal for a little bit. And it looked like they were going to do it opposite of their arena soccer schedule. So they would have the exact same teams participating in both. But indoor in the winter, futsal in the summer. Which is also kind of exciting. Hey, maybe some summer futsal will be easier to watch without being competitive with other leagues. Although when we saw that happen with some other leagues here in the United States, it turned out that the viewership in the summer in person and otherwise is not very good. People would rather be outside than watch your screen. So interesting. We'll see what happens from here. Does that ownership group now focus on something like a futsal program and try and go in a different direction? Completely different look and rebrand compared to what the NISL is. Maybe they're able to sneak away and get a hard restart with the fan base and focus on something in the same vein but different. Panama with a nice little passing play there, but not a good shot at the end. Granite had to be through a lot of legs, so I don't blame him one bit. Yeah, can't help but be curious what's going to happen with that. I'm assuming nothing. I'm assuming those ownership groups will mostly merge together and create a bunch of overhead. Maybe there'll be some uh, maybe there'll be some people who step away and or get let go or repositioned into other roles because there's really no reason to have that many executives from both those groups. Both leagues are about, I think five to eight teams each on the men's side. Only three minutes to go. It's still zero to zero. This game very much a grind. Both teams really locking it down on defense. Panama with more opportunities, but none of them particularly venomous. And just as I say that, Cuba scores. Wow. 
seemingly from nothing. Number nine for Cuba. Makes his way down the line, beats two defenders, and shoots an absolute rocket into the near, uh, excuse me, just over the goalkeeper's head, kind of dead center by the time it crossed the goal. We got our first goal of the game, and it's for Cuba. I just got done saying that Panama seemed to have the lion's share of the opportunity, albeit not uh, particularly venomous. And then as I'm saying that, Jonathan Hernandez from Cuba just blasts one into the net. And I believe now we have a timeout. A chance to regroup here. Great shot. Let's see what uh, Panama comes with coming out of this timeout. Yes. Hey, good to see you again. Is that a uh, Michael? Is that how you say your name? Keep on the four foot here. Oh, I never put my pole in for you guys. Shame on me. Who you got? we go a little vote for you guys who do you think is going to win this one who are you cheering for about two minutes left in the first half Nice little move. Uh, still, unfortunately, gets poked away. Great skills on uh, on show for this tournament. Not quite as flashy as what we see from South America and Europe. But seeing these little flashes of brilliance from a lot of players. Luke, what's up, Jake? I'm on mobile, so I can only watch one stream. Uh, back and forth. Great goal by Cuba. I'm at soccer practice. Hey, yeah, do those dad duties, man. I like it. I feel it. We started a couple couple minutes late for the same reason here. Had to take care of the little kiddos. Yeah, great goal by Cuba. I was, you were probably watching the goal when I said this, but I thought that uh, well enough of Panama to say that they've kind of had the lion's share of the opportunity, albeit none of them particularly um, dangerous. I, I think I said venomous. But right as I said that, Cuba scores and proves me wrong. So uh, now Panama's got to figure things out here with a minute eight to go. We've seen some last-second goals already today. United States getting their second goal right before the half against Guatemala, literally at the buzzer. Less than a minute to go here. I've seen a lot of long ball plays in this tournament. I'm not a big fan of the long ball in futsal. I think it kind of defeats the purpose of everything else about the sport. And it hasn't been particularly effective this tournament either. I'm kind of surprised that so many teams are sticking with that strategy.
Do I like Dominican Republic as they are a team on fire right now? Yes. Yes, I do. So um, Luke already knows this. I think he's kind of teeing me up a little bit, but I have said from the beginning that I thought that the Dominican Republic would be difficult uh, and that the U.S. would have their hands full getting out of this group. I didn't think they'd be this good. I thought that they would be disruptive. Um, they're good. They're looking real good. And, you know, one of the things when the Re Dominican Republic played the U.S. yesterday, they kind of got comfortable at the end of the game. They were up a few goals. They seemingly kind of quit a little bit. Uh, the United States throwing on a fifth attacker, not doing it very effectively, but the Dominicans still couldn't seem to find a way to rotate, and they just seemed a little slow on their rotations defensively. But today against Trinidad, they were dialed in from whistle one to the final whistle. And I think that that's the Dominican Republic we can expect in the quarterfinals. Halftime, guys. So at halftime, Cuba won, Panama zero. Yeah, I think the Dominican Republic is going to be tough. I believe, if I can find just a PDF somewhere that actually shows. Here we go. I should probably share this, huh? Okay, let's take a look here. So the um, this is the match schedule so far. And as you can see, for Wednesday, winner of Group A, which is Costa Rica, faces one of the third best teams. If the third best team comes out of the group we're watching now, they'll face them. But if the best third place team comes out of Group A, then they face the third best team from Group C. I feel like uh, I feel like those math like algorithms and stuff should be going across the screen as I'm doing this, and I should be doing that like shocked face. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, depending on who the third place team is, so basically what they're doing here is they're trying to make sure that the winner of Group A doesn't play the third place team from Group A. So if the best third place team comes out of the same group as the winner, then that's where they go to the opposite bracket. Where the bad news is, and I, Luke got to hear me complain a little bit earlier today about this, is the commentator kept talking about Costa Rica not being the first place team before they even had their last game of the day against Mexico. And for me, Costa Rica is extremely difficult to beat, and this Mexican side's not good enough. Costa Rica doesn't look as dominant as they have in years past this tournament, but they certainly still look 10 shoulders ahead of most, if not all, of the other teams still. So for me, he kept saying how, if well, if the United States wins this group, then they'll likely face Costa Rica. No. And actually now the United States will very likely face uh, the winner of Group B. Right? Yes. So the United States is going to dodge a bullet here. If things go the way I think they're going to go. I think that the best third place team to join the United States is coming to come out of tonight of these two games, which means they would face Panama. So Panama has also made it to the world cup like three years in a row. That is not an easy fixture for the United States, but certainly a better opportunity to continue on for that world cup slot than, uh, than Costa Rica. And if the U.S. plays how they did today, even how they bombed at the end of the game, they could have a chance to stay in it with, with Panama. A couple of mistakes going United States' way could be the difference of them getting a World Cup slot or not. But from what I've seen so far this tournament, Panama is definitely the better team over the United States of America, hands down. So tonight we'll know for sure, depending on how things go in this group. If Canada and Nicaragua tie then Suriname makes it through. Which is crazy to think about because Suriname won their first game today against Haiti. and They might be able to sneak in there if Nicaragua and Canada play to a stalemate. In which case the United States does play Costa Rica and they're 
tournament is over. I would put, I would bet my paycheck on it. USA lucked out. If US plays like they did today, they have a great chance. They just need some game management. Agree 100%. Game management today was horrific. Oh, you guys would see my analytics. How do you like that? I forgot I was sharing my desktop. <laughs> yeah, so the, um, it, it is. It's, it was a little bit lucky. You know, the first goal was on a PK, but they were able to manage the fouls in a very physical game. So give the United States credit for that in the first half. But that second half, they just completely lost their focus. You got a veteran like Diego Moretti that is subbing off incorrectly uh, and gets his second yellow card of the game for it, and he's no longer in. Uh, Barato, I don't even remember his first name, nor do I care to. I That guy stinks. He is such a liability to the United States when he's on the court. Don't know why he's there. He shouldn't be allowed to carry the water to the bench. I mean, he's bad. And I think he's, you know what the sad part is, is I feel the players that have had the most negative impact on us in this tournament are true futsal players. Think about Luciano in the game yesterday and how he just gave up halfway through the game. Jogging back, yelling at teammates instead of actually participating in some defense, being the fly keeper and not moving, just standing stationary like the rest of the team. You're the futsal player on the team. You should be the one that's working your ass off and moving. You're the one that's used to this pace. That's disappointing. And then Barato, I think, is listed as unattached. So I don't know if he's, I don't know if he plays for a small, he might play for a futsal academy that has an adult team or something. I don't know. I think I saw that at some point over the weekend when I was trying to figure out who he was. And then I just didn't care anymore. I mean, there's there's some major problems on this roster. Big time problems on this roster. Have you heard anything about why Damron played today? Hey, I love that that the uh, the commentators are called Robert Robert Damron, and uh, I think it's Damron. So they're close. I mean, they don't know, but it's just funny for us back home to hear it. Uh, yeah, I don't, Luke, I don't know. I, I was wondering, Luke and I were texting back and forth earlier today, and we were wondering, uh, Luke brought up, maybe it was to change the pace, since Robert's a little more, uh, being youthful, maybe a little more agile to come up and help distribute the ball in a, in a pinch. Um, but then when he tried to sub back out, once we got, let two goals in on the fly keeper, Diego ran out onto the court, still wearing his bib. And also, entered the court before Robert had left it. So he got a red card, a ye- his second yellow. For those of you that don't know in futsal, if you sub incorrectly, it's an instant yellow card. There's no there's no second chances on that. So you have to wait till your teammate is completely off the court within the hashes, hash marks on the sideline for your bench before you can go on. So a lot of times what teams do is they already have to wear bibs on the sideline to uh, show that they're substitutes and not active on the court. Usually you take that off, hand it to the other guy, and that's how you know you're good to go. But in this case, Diego left his on, and he just ran out there and then realized he didn't have it. And next thing you know, he and Robert are both standing on the court together, exchanging a bib as opposed to doing it on the sideline. Easy call for the referee. Silly call. The referee's got to call it. I mean the elementary rule of futsal and it was Diego just losing his mind for a second, not thinking straight, but definitely not the person you would expect to see that kind of mistake from when you got uh, your most tenured player on the roster getting kicked out of the game. So that's the other thing, Luke is um, I guess he's not going to play in the next game, right? So Robert will be between the pipes against probably Panama. Side Dameron, we have another keeper because we won't have a backup next game. Luke, you're right. I don't think we have another keeper. I think I think Robert's it. I think Robert's the end of the bench for that. But Rato, <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on that, man. I that guy stinks. I don't know if you hear when I said it earlier, but he shouldn't even be allowed to carry the water for the team. He doesn't belong there. 
it's so far in over his head. So is a coach for that record, too. Tried to reserve my judgment, but Hewerton's way in over his head on this. I'm a little surprised. I thought with his futsal background and his coaching history in arena soccer that he'd be able to at least manage men. But uh, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I know what's going on. is It's an inexperienced squad with an inexperienced coach that have done virtually nothing, trained for this, one training camp, and they went to Argentina to play some club teams, which, to be fair, was probably close competition for us, and they probably got beat most places they went by a goal or two. But it's it's a tale as old as time. You do this kind of coaching swap in the middle of a uh, a cycle, on the tail end of a cycle. It's it's a bad it's bad record. But that that red card for Barato is the best thing that could have happened to the team. Being short him for Wednesday is fantastic news. And I don't think they're going to make it out of the quarterfinal either way. But if they do make it to the semifinal, which I would, I hope they do, I don't think they will. To be clear, I hope they would do. But they, I don't think they will. But they're going to be really depleted going into that semifinal match. we got four other players, I think, on yellow cards. On yellow card accumulation, I think. Depending on how physical Wednesday is. Might have other problems. All right, guys, I'm going to heat up some uh, mate water really quick, and I'll be right back down, and we will continue this on. Um, they're panning on the crowd right now. Nicaragua fans starting to uh, trickle in, trickle in, filling up that beautiful balcony. So um, they'll get to enjoy this game between Panama and Cuba to see who fights for that second place slot. If Cuba leaves points on the table, there is a chance that Nicaragua or Canada can jump them into the second place slot. So interesting stuff. Um, all kinds of scenarios to think about. Yeah, because Cuba only has two points. So let's say they only tie or lose to Panama. Nicaragua or Canada could jump them, depending on who wins that last game. Plus, tournament play is a beast of its own. You really have to know what you are doing as a coach in tournament play. I agree. Yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't come in like this. You just can't. And there's some teams in the AFC coming up in this next tournament that are in a similar boat, and they're going to fail as well. That's it. You can't let the dysfunction of the federation trickle down to the team like this. But what choice do you have as well, I guess, right? Crazy. All right, guys, I will be right back in a flash.
Oh man, they started already. I timed this so poorly. Sorry, guys. So I get for not taking my phone with me since I had the stream going on there. You guys see a dog tail? I think I wrote back. Sorry about that, guys. I gotta get that phone charger probably at the end of this game. I'll probably grab a light snack. Cuba getting off to a hot start as well. Looks like they scored. They made it two to nothing. I'm very sorry I missed that, guys. Worst YouTuber ever. Boo. What is two to nothing, Cuba? Second half it is underway. See what else these guys can manage. That's uh, super important for Cuba that they win this game and secure that second place slot. Okay, doke. You guys get to hear the ASMR of me making mate. I don't know if this is picking up on the mic or not, but pouring the pouring the mate into the into the cup. Dust and leaves. Pomelo flavored mate today. One of my favorites. Love me some pomelo mate. One more flip. Get that settled in there. Woo. And apparently, spill some into the keyboard too gamers out there this is probably your worst nightmare what i'm doing right now okay easy fix at least all right try again it's over there we go everything's nice and settled in and then i just gotta say because i'm a mate drinker I was using a Stanley way before those basic white girls were. All right. So this is not a, this is like a legitimate camping thermos Stanley. This is not a, a you know, well, I already said what I said. You guys knew where no one's going. All right. I don't want to hear it in the, I don't want to hear it in the comments. I won't hear it. Will not hear it. So a friend of mine that used to live here was uh, from Argentina. He got me into mate uh, from just becoming friends with him through futsal, believe it or not. And so we kind of bonded over mate, talked a lot over mate late at night, um, hanging out all together as a group. Uh, he now lives in another state, but... Um, we even took it as far as we would go night fishing for catfish and sit and chat. So his kids would go to bed. I didn't have any kids at the time. And that was our time away without disrupting, you know, family time. Okay, the kids are passed out. We got nothing better to do. Let's go do some night fishing, see if we can get some catfish. And a lot of those nights were just drinking some mate and talking about anything and everything and just kind of bonding. So uh, mate means a lot to me for that reason. I also visited Argentina with him back in 2018 and Uruguay and uh, really got to soak in that culture and it really sold it for me. So um, not trying to look like I am cultured. I just know a little bit enough about it to uh, know I like mate. All right, that's it. Accept it for what it is. Probably not the best thing to be drinking this late at night as it's caffeinated does give you some energy but i did just a couple cups of mate last night and it didn't have too much effect as far as the sleep schedule so i 
I'm curious to see how Panama approaches this second half now. There's 14 minutes to go. Seemingly, you haven't really found a way to get through this Cuban defense. You've almost had another one there. Great play on a counter. Um, they don't really need the points. They're locked in at first. So do they bother? I don't know. I'm not sure. Definitely an interesting day today of games. The results themselves not surprising for me so far. But just the manner in which we got to some places. I guess that USA Guatemala game was a shocker for me. Did not think that we'd get, draw a point out of that. We played so poorly yesterday. I kind of forgot that we won the first game because <laughs> that game didn't even look very convincing when we won it. Didn't feel like a win when we were done. Panama having the majority of possession from what I've seen so far, but they just can't seem to penetrate to a point where they're in a dangerous area. It's really just a, just past half into Cuba's half. Great defensive slide tackle there from Panama. Well done. Cuba tried to counter. Cuba up for the or uh, Panama up for the task though. You know, something else that's been referenced a lot in this tournament that I think is silly is uh, the ranking system. And it's an outdoor, too. This whole ranking index thing is so broken to me. I mean, it's, it's a cumulative over essentially lifetime. So it doesn't truly give a, a active rank, uh, excuse me, active ranking more uh, historic ranking than anything. And I, um, I just don't know what the point of that is per se. Like, I mean, I, it's interesting, it's interesting stuff, but it, to reference it, particularly as a commentator or as, uh, an organization just doesn't seem to make much sense in its current format. I mean, technically speaking by that, Honduras is ranked 10th best in CONCACAF. They haven't even participated in the last two CONCACAF Futsal Championships. So who, who cares what they're ranked? They shouldn't be in the rankings if they've been inactive for that long. Also, these rankings haven't been updated since 2021, so why are we referencing them? I'm looking at them now. CONCACAF Futsal Championship ranking as of October 3rd, 2021. It's so obsolete. No 
Oh, Cuba nearly with another one, but the player slipped as he was shooting the ball. Again, Panama with the majority of the possession, just not really finding a way to do much with it. And to be frank, I don't think they're putting enough pressure on Cuba. Kind of sitting back. Cuba's letting them keep the ball. They're really not pressing them. Waiting a while before they add the press. Now they're starting to press it in. Interesting, interesting. Do they want the win? Do they care? They don't need the points. I wonder how hosting for this works. Does anybody know? Is it a bid process like the World Cup? I wonder if it is a bid process, and then if that's the case, how interested are other CONCACAF teams in hosting this thing? And do they have the facilities to host? Could Canada use an arena that's traditional for hockey and host? I would I would travel to Canada, depending on where it is in Canada. If it was, you know, Quebec or... Toronto. I think it would make sense to pop up there and catch a couple games, that caliber of game. Wow, what an absolute rocket ship. If the net wasn't there, that would have gone to the moon. That was incredible. Great goal in Panama. Cuts the deficit down to one. Great individual effort. Caught the keeper, I think, a little off guard. I think he was a little late to stretch out on that one. But that was a thing of beauty. Abdiel Ortiz, number six for Panama. Curiouser and curiouser. Panama again on the ball. Seven minutes and 12 seconds to go. Two to one, Panama with a corner kick. They look to lob it across, and it's into the feet of a Cuban player. Little tussle sees it go out of bounds, and Panama regains possession. I wonder what that bid process is like for this. Will the U.S. ever care enough to participate?
<laughs> Sorry, I got a text from my wife. I was just making sure the kids were participating. But those of you with kids may know two new episodes came out for Bluey today. And one of them was a 28-minute long special. And if you know anything about Bluey, it's because you have kids. Or maybe you don't have kids and you just know about Bluey. I won't judge you. It's a great show. Uh, Bluey's typically an 8 to 10 minute episode. You know, they're short and sweet. When I saw one of them was 28 minutes, I'm like, my goodness, what is this? Is this going to be a game-changing episode? And sure enough, it did not disappoint. A lot of uh, tear-jerking moments for the adults. Probably things that went over my two-year-old's head. For, uh, not probably, definitely. Uh, but yeah, interesting topic, touchy subject, of course, uh, for kids, uh, was kind of centered around the potential of moving away from all your friends and family, and uh, there's a bunch of other stuff going on in the background as well. It was a really big episode. had to be a long episode, but uh, yeah, so I watched it with the two-year-old today while my wife was putting the baby to bed, and when she came back down, I said, okay, you gotta, you gotta watch Bluey. You're gonna, you're gonna. You're going to react to some stuff, okay? And she has. She reacted in, to one thing in particular that means a lot to us and our family. Uh, so I don't know how far along she is in the rest of the show. So I can ask her about anything else she saw. But we'll find out tomorrow. We'll talk to her tomorrow. That's enough kids show talk. We got CONCACAF Championship Futsal we're watching here, guys. What am I thinking? Ooh. That was bold from Cuba. Hell of a volley, 180 spin along the way. Definitely would have uh, made it onto seven Futsal highlights with that one, but it was audacious. So the chances that end up on frame were pretty, pretty unlikely. Anima somehow retaining the ball through a ton of traffic. Now they've drawn a foul. Six twelve to go in the half. This Cuban side yesterday as well played kind of physical. Not dirty, just physical. A um, couple late tackles here and there, but nothing that I think they're doing on purpose. You know, it's just part of the game. We saw quite a bit of physicality between Guatemala and the United States today. The Haiti Suriname game looked kind of tame. And I miss Costa Rica, Mexico, but I'd imagine that one was a little feisty. Just both those teams knowing how they played the rest of the tournament. I could see that one being a little little touchy at times. And having not watched the game, but seeing the score line four to two, it's hard to tell if there were uh tense moments in that game or what the lead was like for Costa Rica throughout the game. The way things look for tomorrow, Wednesday. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, my gosh. I keep saying I keep saying tomorrow. The quarterfinals are not until Wednesday. Is that a typo? No, it's not. So, second place from Group A, which is Mexico. Face Guatemala in the six o'clock game. We'll likely just miss that, but if I can get away early, I will try and do a watch along for it as well. But the night will end with whoever ends up in second place in this group that we're watching tonight against uh, the Dominican Republic. 
So Luke, if you're still in the chat, if you're here pop, from popping back and forth, we'll get to watch the Dominican Republic on Wednesday night uh, with the watch along. The United States will either play. Well, no, they will. They will likely play Panama. I think that that's the only way that can go. If I'm reading this right, the USA will play Panama. Means a third place team from tonight will face Costa Rica to open quarterfinal play on Wednesday. It'll be a noon Eastern time game, 2 p.m. local time. No, that can't be right. 2 p.m. Eastern time, noon local time in Nicaragua. We got a timeout for Panama here with just under four minutes to go. They're still down a goal. Selfishly, I'm glad that these Saturday night games will be later, that I could stream them with you guys. I'm kind of surprised they're not mid-afternoon. Get everybody on a plane and get them home. Wrap this tournament up. So as we wrap up this game, three votes in the poll. Two of you picking Panama. One of you picking Cuba. And right now we've got three goals total, and two of them are to Cuba, and one is to Panama. So we will see. It looks like Panamanian fans in our chat, at least, uh, are uh, outnumbering Cuba. Some high press from Cuba. They win the ball, and now they're starting to form a counter here, but they tried to reset first, then go, and they gave Panama a chance to bring the numbers. And the Cuban Fixo never really made it forward to help out. He's way back there. What's he doing all the way back there? One goal lead with three and a half. I don't want my fixo sitting back with the keeper while well, I'm over on the other half taking a corner. How bizarre. Panama ever so nearly with a counter there, but not keep control of the ball. You're down to three minutes to go, just over three minutes. Panama is starting to play with a little more pace, trying to find that tying goal. Ooh, nearly saw it there. Hell of an angle, but. Wow, great reactions from the Panamanian goalkeeper there. Could have been 3-1. Point-blank shot from Cuba on a deflection. Panama now with a counter. Oh, they hit the post. Oh, no. Goalkeeper was beat. Oh, wow. Great passing sequence there to get the goalkeeper out of position. He had no choice but to commit to the camera side uh, as the Panamanian team was dribbling into the arc. But they're able to pull off the pass at the last minute to the back post. And unfortunately, that thing pings off the post instead of hitting the net. Otherwise, we'd have a tie game with just two and a half minutes to go. The 
see a player with a bully jersey on on the bench. Yep, sure enough, there's that fifth attacker. Referee pointing towards the bench to the fifth attacker like he maybe subbed in wrong or something, but why isn't that a yellow card then? Cuba tries to sub, but Panama with a quick corner kick, trying to take advantage of them being down a man or two in rotation. Panama with some short passing on one side. Looks like they're trying to lull Cuba into that far side of the court to open up their fifth attacker on the other side. Goal. Goal for Panama. It worked. They pulled the Cubans out of position. Their compact diamond really fell apart, and three guys were ahead of the ball in a single pass. And they didn't even need the fifth attacker. The fifth attacker actually gave up on the play and was running back to his own half. As the It looks like the fixo there. Lines is all on the back post. The guy that originally generated the pass, number eight, does enough to open up that uh, Cuban defense. And Akies Campos who is no stranger to the score sheet, ties it up. I've been so impressed with it that I didn't bother updating the score bug, so let's do that. It is 2-2, two to two, guys. 2-2. Two to two. Quick counter from Cuba, and wouldn't you know it, they score. Well, good thing I'm still on this score bug. Here we go. 3-2 to two, Cuba with a minute and 20 seconds to go. That counter was so fast. What a counterattack. Runs right down the line, just outplays his defender, absolutely muscles him down, and nutmegs the keeper for the goal. Oh, my goodness. So the fifth attacker back out for Panama. He stands on the ball. They're taking their time. It looks like they're allowing a sub for some strategic rotation here. Here we go. Same thing. They've got three guys stacked up on the far side of the court. And that same play, this time the Cuban keeper's ready. And now the counter. Cuba with a shot. The Fixo beats it. Fifth attacker now is taking a minute to release his sphincter, I'm sure. That had to have uh, been a little tight for him there. Like he was going to have to make a save with his face or worse. Panama back on the ball. 38 seconds to go. Interesting play here from Panama. You know, you throw an extra guy on the court. And then you kind of are playing a game slow. And it looks like trying to lull Cuba into a false sense of security. Twenty seconds ago, Panama looking for a way through some passing sequences to open something up. Fifth attacker playing even deeper now, and now he's playing off the far post. Oh, a chance to cross that ball in, missed by Panama. Nice rotation, another shot. Oh, so close. Four seconds left. It looks like Cuba has secured a second place spot to advance. Nice long throw to burn some time. Headers off the crossbar. Oh, the people decides, yeah, why not? 1.4 seconds left. Ends up hitting the upper 90. And the Cuban team already celebrating here because that's the game. That's it. So Cuba secures second place with that win. So they are guaranteed through. They do not have to sweat what happens in this last game of the night. Good for them. Hard fought, way to stick in it. That game was a grind from the early onset. And if I'm watching this game as the United States, I'm feeling a little bit better about facing Panama. They did not quite look as sharp as they had in previous games. Now again, uh, how much of that is resting, knowing they don't need the points? I think if that was the case, they wouldn't have flown the goalkeeper, though. 
unless they're just maybe messing around a little bit with some tactics in case they need it in the quarter or semifinals. Now's the time to do it. Panama walking off with their heads held high. They know they've already got their guaranteed first spot. They're not worried about it. Oh, someone came in with the last minute vote for Cuba. Oh, sneaky boys and girls. Oh, yeah, I knew Cuba was going to win. Hit it after they make them win. Come on now. I see you guys. I see what you guys are up to. Okay, so the final match of the night will be happening here. Oh, wow, we got a little while, actually. That game ended really quick. We got a long while. Yeesh, we got like 35 minutes before the next game. All right, new poll is up. We have about 35 minutes before kickoff on the next game. I might grab a quick snack, take advantage of that, and feed the fish. But we'll probably spend the majority of the time chilling here, hanging out. Um, and then when the game starts, we'll see what kind of action we can get. Uh, Chris Fernandez, if you guys are familiar with him, he will be actually commentating for this game for one soccer. I don't know if that will be the same commentary we would hear on the stream from CONCACAF, or if that's someone different. Jonathan Hernandez. All right, guys, I'm going to take a real quick moment here. Eat those fishes. A quick little snack, probably a little protein bar or something. Bring it here and chat with you guys and nibble on it. And, uh, yeah, then we can hang out and chit-chat until the next game. Hashtag just chatting stream. <laughs> but yeah, I'll move the chair to the side. We'll do a little feeding and uh, get after it for the rest of the night, guys. I'll try and keep an eye on the chat while I'm messing around here. And uh, if I see you guys chatting, I'll make sure I come over and uh, acknowledge it straight away, even if I'm not done doing whatever I'm doing. So, uh, yeah, let's see what we've got going on and see what kind of drama we can get in this very last game of the group stage.
I am back. Sorry about that quick intermission. Let me do a... I mean, this watch party thing's new for us. So... We're not really set up for it. But... If I need to get a camera for close up on the aquarium if we keep doing this so when i get to step away for a minute half time or a final in on those fishies and give you guys something to look at <clears throat> we've got 25 minutes before we see the next game kick off Great time to banter. Curious how you guys are doing, how you're feeling. What did you think of the games today if you caught them all? Are you a USA fan? How did you feel about that, uh, the way that game ended today? Certainly not the most favorable. Yeah, so I think uh, for me, the only real surprise for me was the Guatemala-USA game. I can't believe the USA got three goals up. I did not expect that. And then uh, for Guatemala to punish the United States with three unanswered goals to pull a draw out of that, um, not surprised i guess by that part just kind of surprised that the u.s was playing so well and then absolutely played so poorly so quickly i mean the tide turned so rapidly there from what they were doing well to suddenly just complete utter breakdown uh from some of our most experienced players as well making silly mistakes that cost us their presence in the game um that was really the only shock and then that uh that and the Dominican Republic winning by as much as they did. Felt like Trinidad would put up a little more of a fight, have a little more pride going into that last game. But uh, the Dominican Republic, again, just looked super strong today. And they went into that game looking like they already knew what Trinidad was going to try. That's how I felt they looked against the United States. Right? Like they've done their research. Right? While everybody else is sleeping in their hotel room, they're up... Uh, in the factory right, coming up with a coming up with a game plan and uh the dominican republic has gone into both those games prepared and so on one hand i'm surprised by how much they won by against trinidad i didn't expect that but on the other hand i guess i should know better from what they presented to us so far in the way that they've acted in this tournament costa rica beating mexico four to two is not surprising um you know, if anything, I think my shock of the tournament is Costa Rica hasn't really had much in the way of runaway games. Uh, the Haiti game looks like a runaway game on paper, but that's the most goals that has been scored on Costa Rica in eight years. And no one else in the current tournament has matched it. It's just, yeah, not, not what we're used to. Costa Rica still winning, still undefeated. That part, of course, makes sense if you look at it on paper. Uh, but when you actually break down the goal difference between these games and how they've played, I mean, I've missed two of the games as well. I really only caught one half, and that was the Costa Rica versus Haiti game, you know, and that was because it was only a half. So I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the games were tighter than they look than it look look on paper. And when you're at the top of the mountain, everybody wants to topple you. Everyone brings their A game.
Robert Dameron getting plenty of touches today, plenty of uh, of time in between the pipes. I'm assuming he'll have to in the next game as well. And then he's going to come home for NFPL uh, Division Finals against Grand Rapids Olay. Grand Rapids not playing their best lately. Robert Dameron coming off some international experience. And then the other players for them that are playing so well. I could see uh, the team from Ann Arbor coming out of Grand Rapids with, with a victory and going on to play Colorado. I think if that happens, they have to travel to Colorado. But I don't know for sure. Hold up. Hold up. Hold it up. Guys, I'm the worst tweeter in the world. I don't do it consistently. Um... I don't stay on the platform for long because there is a lot of smut. Um, but every once in a while I get on there and I express my opinion. I've been a little more vocal on there with the U.S. participating the way they have lately. Um, I want to just get the word out for this last little bit of the game and see if we can get some Canadians to join us in the chat. All right, it's out there in the cyberverse. Woohoo! At just over 15 minutes before we go to game time here, guys. So, a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a break in the action, but I think it'll be worth it. and get our score bug reset for this next game. I'm going to do a better job with this Canada logo so that it's a little easier to read for you guys. There we go. Okay. Next half again. Time's loaded up. All right. We're rocking and rolling. Doing some real pro YouTuber stuff now. Look at us.
full on Canada. Luke, yeah, you know what? I'm uh I was hoping the Nicaraguan side would have a good showing as the host. They also um in recent time have invested in futsal a little bit. They were kind of silently under the radar, had some good things going on. But I really have fallen in love with the way that this Canada team has been playing. Um, even when they lost last night to Panama, their intensity from the first whistle to the last whistle never faltered. It never looked like they were down by four. They played so intense until the very last whistle, and I absolutely love that. That's my kind of energy. We are not done until that final whistle blows. Love that about this Canadian side. How can you not cheer for a team like that? I mean, no-brainer for me. So I can't vote because I'm the one that created the poll, but if I could, I would put my name on Canada. I think they're going to pull this one out. They've had great pressure in both their games. They've kept the pressure high. Um, the makeup of the team is interesting as well in the sense that a lot of these guys play together back home. So they've got a good um, – they seem to have good court sense. And when I say that, I mean not only the court vision – find those passes but because of their knowledge of how they how each other plays it, it looks very fluid their court sense about where their teammates going to go next that pass and move okay where's my teammate moving to after he passes me the ball boom 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 looks really nice and smooth looks like this team plays together all the time so i uh, i really like it i really like it a lot so they'll be kicking off in just under 15 minutes we got a little bit of time in between games here that Cuba Panama game went by quick. Um, not a lot of stoppages in that one. Those of you in the chat, what do you think? What do you think of the game so far today? If you've been watching, sound off. Let us know your opinion. The stream is not about me, it's about you guys. I want a place where the futsal community across the globe can go and chat flits all on YouTube. I think we need more stuff like this. Hanging out as a community, enjoying this beautiful game that we all love so much. Especially watch it, uh, refreshing to watch this Canadian side. Uh, Luke, was it Saturday or Sunday when we watched together the USA game? And it was just so bad. Would have had to have been Sunday, right? And they, it was the complete opposite. The United States had zero heart, zero character. Very static play. Um, and then to end in the evening with this group B and to be able to see the way that Canada plays with that intensity about them. And then uh, last night, Nicaragua as well also played uh, like their lives depended on it and were very entertaining to watch. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's all blurred together now. I'm not used to being on YouTube this much. <laughs> We went from once a month letting somebody else do the talking to uh, three days in a row and just you and me talking into a microphone is, uh, yeah, it's a little different, a little different. The stamina of these full-time streamers to do this, it doesn't seem like much just sitting here, but I have to think of something new to say and all that stuff. I give them a ton of credit and not say something that's going to get them canceled. Goodness. That mic is hot. You can't just uh, take back stuff, you know. It's it's uh, it's the moment. Curious what everybody thinks too about the other qualifiers that are going on. You know, we've got the uh, AFC five on five tournament is going to be happening here on the seventeenth. That'll be the first day. That'll be the same day that the quarterfinals are for Concacaf. That their tournament will be kicking off, and then. 
uh, the Africa Cup of Nations is going on right now as well to find their three World Cup qualified teams. The one like us in CONCACAF where we know our winners by the end of the quarterfinal round. The African teams will have to wait until the final day to know because only the medal winners will represent them in Uzbekistan. And then I, I don't remember actually how many slots the AFC has. Is it three? AFC has four, excuse me. And then, of course, the host being Uzbekistan will actually technically be a total of five AFC teams in this one. When is the World Cup? September? Yes, it is. It's late September. I want to say, for some reason, the 26th? No, uh, the 14th. September 14th through October 6th. So we will have, we will have, uh, we got to figure out who our last two UEFA qualified teams are this week as well. I believe that takes place, and it, it might have already taken place. Let me check UEFA's website real quick. Uh, no, okay, so the first legs have already happened between four remaining teams in UEFA. So we've got Croatia versus Poland, which is happening tomorrow. Croatia is currently winning 3-2 to two after the first leg. And then Finland faces the Netherlands, and they are tied 1-1 one to one after the first leg. Finland and the Netherlands is an interesting one to me. Uh, both of those teams have really invested in futsal in recent years. I'd say in the last four to eight years, last couple cycles, they've been a little louder about their futsal programs. And I think that they are going to be very interesting. Whoever comes out of that, I, I hope that they find some success in the World Cup and get some payback for the investment that their FAs have put in compared to a lot of the world that's not investing right now in futsal. So really cool. Really hoping for the best for them. Croatia and Poland, both two solid futsal programs there as well. <clears throat> and that'll round out the seven teams for UEFA once we figure out who wins those, those two games. So that would be one, two of those four teams, Ukraine, Spain, defending champs Portugal, Kazakhstan, and France. France is another one I find very, very interesting with their investment in futsal. Uh, OFC only has one representative, which is New Zealand. And some friends of the channel here from Bloomsbury Futsal have teammates on Bloomsbury that come from uh, New Zealand and play for and represent the national team. I believe there's two of them, three of them that play for New Zealand. Uh, and then another interesting thing about our friends over at Bloomsbury, if you guys remember me interviewing... Uh, Wardy last year. Another one of his teammates is playing for the Dominican Republic as well. So that Bloomsbury squad, it's no surprise that they're as successful as they are right now at uh, domestic futsal. And then, of course, the South American Cup, Brazil, shocker, uh, Argentina, shocker, and then Paraguay and Venezuela. Um, and arguably, Paraguay is not very shocking about that either. It's their eighth appearance in a World Cup, I think someone said. But New Zealand, first time World Cup appearance in futsal, which is a really exciting story. France, first time appearance in futsal, which is really exciting. So um, I think outside of that, most of the other teams that end up qualifying are going to be regulars, with the exception of maybe that Finland or Dutch finish. I think both of them might be first timers if they make it. But really cool stuff. And then you got the you got your regulars, of course, too. I mean, there's been South American granddaddies. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Argentina and Brazil haven't missed a World Cup. Spain hasn't missed a World a World Cup in futsal. Um, 
these kind of countries that have just they've been dialed into it forever it's uh it's it's no shocker to, that they're back again for the 10th iteration of this thing let's see if the live stream has started yet for this canada match in the words of pat mcafee the concafa cup <laughs> Not just yet. They're going to be live in four and a half minutes. Right before 10. Right at 10. Speaking of Pat McAfee, I know that he uh, entered a team into the TST tournament. Curious what you guys think about that. The tournament is so successful, brings so many eyes, that prize money is hard to ignore. So close to being futsal. How do we get there? How do we get these people that are participating in this tournament to be interested in us too? That'll be the curious thing. Imagine someone with the energy of a, of a Pat McAfee or his uh, his head coach Tony Miola uh, deciding to invest in futsal in the United States and making a change in the in the uh, the dynamic of the sport here. Someone like a JJ Watt who's participating in TST with his wife, already an investor in Burnley FC in England. What if that investment money stayed in the States for something special? All the what ifs that we can uh, fantasize about, you know? It's interesting. Hey, if you guys are new, as we sit here and we wait for this game to go live, welcome. First and foremost, we're so happy to have you here. Uh, we're doing some watch along parties throughout this tournament. We started on uh, Saturday. And we've kind of done some spot games here and there. Has it been an all-day affair? And then we really consistently watch Group B because it's been the 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. evening games, which are easy for me to stream because my kids are down uh, for bed by that time, my little munchkins. So we will try and continue this on. We're going to catch the very last game of the quarterfinals and do a watch-along for it. I think when we were looking at it earlier – broken down the schedule so many different ways now that I don't remember exactly who I said. The very last game of the night on Wednesday will be the second place Group C team, which is we already know is the Dominican Republic, against second place in Group B, which we now know will be Cuba. So we'll be watching that Dominican Republic versus Cuba game. The other four during my work day, I won't be able to really follow those. Then the semifinals and finals fall into those late evening brackets, so we'll be doing watch-alongs for them as well. So if you guys are futsal fans and you're home alone watching this and just want someone to interact with during the game, this is a great watch companion, similar to similar to watch companions for UFC that happen on Twitch, streamers there, or we see the NFL doing the same thing right now with Thursday night football games where the streamers on Twitch or YouTube are, are following along with the game. I can't stream the game for you guys, uh, copyright issue, and I've already been warned by YouTube that I've uh, towed that line a little too much for these watch parties, uh, so not going to push it. We do like having the channel here and chatting with you guys, so I'd like to try and maintain it. It's not worth giving it up over uh, over a couple of group stage games. You can also join us on our Discord. We've got a bit of a community growing there. We've got channels to kind of cover everything. If you guys want to go there to find your next gaming partner for a video game or pick up games uh, in your area, if we could start building the community up a little bit there. I'd love to do that. Uh, also have a place where we link live streams like the ones we're watching tonight so that you guys can catch futsal at any time, whenever you have free time. We're just constantly posting leaks as we find them. Uh, anyone's welcome to do that with us. Right now, primarily, Luke and I do it. Uh, and particularly if there's any Canadians in the chat, I'm, I'm very curious how to follow along 
with some of the Canadian leagues. I follow uh, the Quebec League on Facebook and watch their semifinals and finals. Sporting Montreal winning that. That was uh, very cool. They looked like an absolute unit. Uh, but I really don't know how to follow along with the other Providences. And I see the Canadian Championship is going on right now at the same time as well. And uh, we just saw the winners from that. A lot of those team names that were listed, I don't recognize. I'm not sure how to follow them outside of searching for them individually as I see their names pop up. If you guys have links to leagues I can follow. I'd love to do it and share your streams, share your favorite league stream. We can watch along as a community. I think that would be really cool. And that's really the goal of the channel. Help spread the word about futsal. So consider it. All right, 10 o'clock. Got an ad starting. So we must be getting ready to go live here. Sure enough, we are... Lined up for national anthems. <laughs> Canada in white. Nicaragua in blue. <clears throat> I'll flip flop this score bug. Okay, there we go. All right, Canada National Anthem, a beauty. We're diving right into Nicaragua's National Anthem as well here. All right, some high fives. The pleasantries are over. Time to get down to business. This should be exciting stuff. This should be a really good game. There is everything to play for. Three votes so far, two for Canada, one for Nicaragua in the poll. forward to this one getting kicked off. Realized I have the wrong Nicaragua logo. Fix that real quick. I'm trying to be legit.
Okay. All right, coin toss is going on, guys. We're nearly there. Appreciate your patience. I know that this is kind of a lull in the action on this stream as well. We'll have more to talk about here in a little bit, which is exciting stuff. This, add that, boom. Ooh, that's a tiny little logo. Why is that so tiny? This Nicaraguan squad is really young, if I remember right, looking at their rosters. And I believe the Canadian side is not, I think it's a pretty well rounded, if I remember right. Let's see if I can find those rosters again. <laughs> Where are you? Game is off and running. Here we go. A oh, really high press from Nicaragua to start this game. They're coming in uh, looking to put Canada on their heels. Canada says, that's fine. We'll go over the top. Meeting, then I'll join you. Sounds good, Luke. Awesome. Yeah, if you want to jump in on the VOD, just uh, do it anytime. Uh, I'm going to have to pull my patience card here. I just don't want to miss too much of the game with you guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Final rosters. Here we go. Yeah, pretty well-rounded Canadian side. Older squad, I'd say, compared to... Well, definitely compared to Nicaragua. Goalkeeper John Smith's being the oldest of the group at uh, 35. And his club back home actually just won the Canadian Championship, I believe. And de Octubre. I swore I saw that come through. Strong start for both teams so far for me here in this first minute and a half. Both teams playing physical, trying to trying to express their dominance here. This Nicaraguan side is fairly balanced in age, now that I look at it again. I mean, a lot of 20-somethings uh, make up the squad, but there's also several several others that are late 20s. Yeah, I love that keeper jersey. I'm with you on that, Luke. 
one of those sunrise or sunset jerseys, I think is what they call it. Beautiful. Position for a kick in here for Canada. They're resetting though. Looking to create some space. Love this pace. It's not panicked, but it's moving really quick. High press from both teams. Canada's got Nicaragua choked out in their own corner right now. Forced to give it up. Push it out of bounds. Canada now essentially has a corner kick. Ooh, good eye to see that back post, but just can't quite get it there. First real mishap from Canada there with the wayward pass. I mean, they've done for three and a half minutes, four minutes into this game. They're just now seeing their first, for me, true mistake. Not even that big a deal. Not in a dangerous place. Not that far off either. Physical, physical game so far. And it's starting to ramp up. See if it stays at that intensity or if that's just a moment of passion. But uh, when you're playing at this pace, you've got to expect a little, uh, little bit of swapping paint. Making NASCAR proud. Pass and move, pass and move. Very nice. <clears throat> you know, we haven't seen much of anything too electrifying as far as shots on goal just yet. But I will say this, Canada's definitely had the lion's share of the possession. And even though they haven't had a real venomous even though they haven't had a real venomous uh attack just yet you can you can see it coming you can you can feel it coming They're just knocking on the door. Ooh, now that was a nice little shot there. The Nicaraguan goalkeeper gets a strong arm to that. That was nice. Corner kick for Canada. That shot coming from, uh, from Clemmy, who is no stranger to... Uh, no stranger to the goal sheet, score sheet. Been very active in this tournament.
Oh, an own goal. And it's Canada's opening goal. Bouncing off a Nicaraguan player. Oh, no. Not like this. That's a tough thing, right? You know, the pace of futsal, you're racing back to your goal to play defense. And if you come in late like that, I don't even know if you could call it late. But, I mean, you're running back as hard as you can to try and get back in time to help defend that goal. But if your body's facing the goal because you're still running to get there, there's a really good chance it's going to bounce off your shins or your knee off of a cross and become an own goal. And we see that so much in this game where let's rifle it into the middle. Even if it bounces around, it's dangerous. Oh, and Nicaragua nearly responds. What a great save from Smits. Wow. Wow. Roberto Diaz credited with the own goal. I'm sure he's thankful for that. Poor guy. If anything, I think that woke Nicaragua up a little bit. They seem to be applying a little better pressure here in response. Ended up playing probably the most amount of defense they have this whole game right now. Oof. Yeah, big oof. Big oof. You hate to see it. Chance for a counter here for Canada. Ooh. Nearly a turnover there that could have been costly for Canada. Game staying physical. Looked like a two-hand shove in the back from a Nicaraguan player there, but no call. Oh, that's a great little play. Oh. Luke, would you say, so for the Canadian side, for Quemi here up top, similar similar body build to, uh, is it Tayu that's playing for the U.S. right now up at Pivo? Um, but it, but here's the difference of him having the weapons around him, right? Is, it, it, would you agree that this is the difference if you could get the Alas to play that position off of you correctly, that this is what it should look like? Canada just knocking on the door still. Relentless. A bit stronger and more mobile. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. His turn is a little more uh, faster turn on the ball. I've seen him turn both directions, use both feet. I don't think we saw that from Tayu. I think he can only use his right foot. Um, and the Alas are passing to him in that center position and then moving down the line to be ready for either the deflection or a pass back out as opposed to the U.S. passing it to Tayu and watching him try and do all the work. Great defense from Canada. Individual play keeps the ball, but still not out of trouble.
goodness. Canada just seems to really be in control here. Did someone lose his shin guard? Is that what I saw? Is that what that was? First real opportunity for Nick Rogg in a while there, <clears throat> but still wide. Ooh, little shot to the face. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was up there. A lot of long balls over the top in this tournament from all the teams. Not a huge fan of that. I prefer the simpler passes, stretching the court wide instead of long. Not to say there's anything wrong with that style of play, just not typically what I enjoy. But even my favorite team in Argentina does that lately, so I guess I got to get used to it. Canada again knocking on the door and earns themselves a corner. Man. Hell of an effort there from both teams. Wow. This has been really enjoyable so far. Really enjoyable watch. Both teams playing with so much heart. A lot of passion. Canada doing a great job of using the whole court, too. Oh, that could be a costly turnover. Bailed out by the goalie. Rebound shot way wide. Chance here for everybody to calm down a little bit. I was just getting ready to say, Canada's doing a great job using the entire court. Uh, forward and back, left to right. They are really making the use of all of that blue floor. A couple of quick turnovers in a row here for them that were nearly costly, but all in all, they seem to really be in control of this game. You know, the, the majority of this Canadian side out out has Nicaragua outsized. And Nicaragua is playing so many balls over the top that they're just losing to the fixo of the Canadian team. 
And it's because like the their guys have no shot. They're head and shoulder shorter than the Canadians. I'm surprised they continue to to, to push that narrative. Not go for a go for a, a tactic change. Halfway through the first half here, ten minutes to go. One oh Canada. Great little lift there to get past two defenders. And we end with a foul against Nicaragua as they try to shove the Canadian off the ball there. Yeah, not exactly playing the ball there. See that a little bit. A little soft, but I see it. I think you have to give that when it's right in front of the referee. I said it last night. I'll say it again. I do not envy these referees, man. That's not a job I would ever uh, raise my hand for. A lot of pressure. Can't win no matter what you do. You're always going to be wrong to somebody. Uh, the game happens so fast, and you have to make educated decisions on what's going on and who's playing legally, illegally. Uh, yeah, I. it's not for me. I'm going to let the professionals handle that. Professionals like Canadian Chris Grabus. Such a good guy. Got to meet him in January. Really nice dude. Very friendly guy. Taught me a lot. Ooh, nice little poke there. Maybe outside of his foot. The way that was curling. Nicaragua still had without a goal here. What do you guys think so far? About halfway through the first half. Oh, Nicaragua finds the net. It's tied one to one. Wow, that was a nice play. And the Nicaragua fans here. Horns nice and loud. Crowds on their feet. That was a great goal. Great shot. Ezekiel Sakira for Nicaragua. That one fleeting moment where they were able to uh, see an opportunity and pounce on it. So Nicaragua has not seen much of the ball so far this half, and they've really been on their back foot, but... That's what makes beautiful uh, games so beautiful is moments like that where the momentum can swing in an instant. But yeah, curious what everybody thinks so far of the game. And if you're just tuning in, what would you think of the games earlier today? And in a bit of trouble here. Counterattack. Keeper comes out and snuffs it out. What a game this has been. Wow. Not insanely high scoring, just absolute high pressure from both teams.
Ooh. Nicaragua seems to be uh, cleaning up their defense a bit here as well. Doubling that big pivot. Pushing him into a corner so he can't turn and shoot right on frame with a nice, clean, dead center shot. They're adapting. Something we've seen a lack of from our own United States side this tournament is adapting to the opposing team's uh, tactics. Really haven't seen that yet from the red, white, and blue. Great, great game so far. A little back and forth here between Canada and Nicaragua. Canada ultimately ending up with the ball, but it's not settled. A lot of bouncing around. We get a Canadian kick in in a dangerous place. For those of you that are here in the in the watch party, what works best for you? It's just talking or you want me to kind of somewhat commentate what's going on if you're not able to view the game i don't want to go oh, what a great goal for canada wow that was some beautiful futsal right there two to one in favor of the canadians great stick on defense there and then an individual effort leads to a pass to the back post an easy little tap in for I believe that was number seven. It was. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I'm not gonna try that one. I don't want to embarrass myself. Oh yeah, sorry, Luke. I got I got like a weird. At one point, I had to change a room I was in. I don't think I have the same link as you. It's in production. I just messaged it to you. Got a man down on this one. Oh, did he? Uh, did you guys see his knee kind of pop backwards on that one? Yeesh. Nick Robin player off on a stretcher. Great. You hate Check to see it. that. Dang. Well, I don't know if I'm on air, but I can't see you or hear you, Jake. Hello? I see you on the live stream. see you there can you hear me well yellow card for canada here let me message luke here real quick i know you guys see him on the stream but i don't think he can hear me i'm hearing you channel but i'm not hearing you over the video that ninja i think uh it's set to like a broadcast where it's just a one way. Get a screenshot here. <laughs> All 
All right, guys, we're at two to one. Seven minutes left. A couple of 50-50s here ultimately leads to a Nicaraguan kick-in. And they have control of the ball right now. I wonder why. Hey, look, I mean, I You guys are going to be kind of things right now. I'm only hearing you over the YouTube channel. That is so strange. Can you hear you over the YouTube channel? Yeah, I can hear me over the YouTube channel. Hmm. I'm going to I'm going to drop out. And we'll fix it at halftime, Jake. I'll, we'll, I'll just drop out for now. Okay. Uh, and then I'm sending you something else here. Tell me if this looks better. Sorry about that, guys. Coming up on five minutes left in the game. Still 2-1 for Canada. Ooh, hard fall there, but great save there. This could be dangerous for, ooh, Canada survives at Nicaragua with a pretty impressive looking attack there for a moment. Clickety clack, clickety clack.
Four and a half left. Nicaragua restarting the play here. Oh, great individual effort, but the shot's right at the keeper. Yeah, I agree, Luke. The intensity of this game is uh, fantastic. Oh, very nearly. Great run of play by the Canadian side. Nearly leads to a goal in the back post again. Like maybe a tactical foul there to kill that counterattack. Results in a yellow. Struck him down from behind. Pretty unnecessary. He had a defender coming to help him. Don't know why he did that. Kind of foolish from the Nicaraguan player. Manuel Mejia. Rock on a counter now after stealing the ball from the Canadians. They snuff it out and force Nicaragua to restart from the back. This time, the lift over the top finds an open Pivo, but he can't do enough with it to create a shot. And ultimately, a pulled shot too far to the inside that was nowhere near target. Nicaragua. Ooh. Very strong from Kwemi there. I think he was trying to find the cross, but just ran out of space, and it ends up right in the keeper's chest for Nicaragua, but it goes right back out of bounds for a kick in. Ended up keeping the pressure on. Pardon my yawning, guys. Put in a little late there. Canada with their foul. Okay, so we got a timeout here with just under three minutes to go. Oh, I didn't realize that was Canada's sixth foul. Nicaragua has a shot from the spot. What can they do with this? John up for the task. Come on, guys. Saves the first, but it deflects out. Goal, Nicaragua. Oh, he saved the first one. But it deflects right back to Nicaraguan feet. And they put it in the back of that net. 
sent that stupid little ball home. Great first save, but there was no missing that second shot. Point blank. All power and speed. Back to two to two. Less than three minutes to go in the first half. Boy, oh boy. The drama in this one. The back and forth. The fight from Nicaragua. The consistency in the high pressure of Canada. Nice quick play, but only results in a corner for Canada. Nicaragua feeling good now. They definitely look like they're playing with a little more energy. Oh my goodness. The Nicaraguan defense was so focused on Quemi and trying to push him outside that he easily finds a pass to the back post. The Nicaraguan manager is losing his mind right now. Definitely, definitely a failure of defense for Nicaragua there. All three pay players for Nicaragua in that play slide to the near post and leave number seven for Canada wide open again on the back post. That's his second goal of the game. Both of them are him being in the right place, trusting his teammates to get to him and making it happen. Do 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 Let's go, Canada. Oh, very flimsy prop here for my phone. Failed me. Canada look lethal. This is why USA is trying to play like. This is what USA is trying to play like, but not doing it well. Yes, yeah. USA is not doing much of anything well. You know that first half against Guatemala looked good. The first two thirds of that game against Guatemala actually looked good, but Guatemala also didn't look great themselves. So it's hard to tell for me was that Guatemala playing bad or was that US finally playing good? I don't know. But at the end of it all, USA just kind of collapsed and uh, gave up some easy points there that they could have they could have had the third place team of this group had they won, or even could have had Mexico for the first round of quarters. And I think Mexico has been fairly untested prior to today. Guatemala looked bad. Yes, they did. I don't know if they just felt that they'd done enough to progress so they weren't worried about it. or Because really the safest position to be in out of that group, out of Group C, like if you want to be tactical about how you place in that group, second place is safe. Because you're playing the third place team from this group, somebody. Another yellow card for Nicaragua. That was a tough foul. Mostly just very late. Player still down. Getting up with the help from both teams. Probably definitely use a mop over there. Yeah, there it is. Okay, right on cue. Man, did anybody else watch those early games and listen to the commentator during that? And if so, what were your thoughts? I was watching while I was at work, and I'm like, this guy stinks. I could do this. 
I don't even kind of don't like commentating because it makes me anxious, but I'm self-conscious about what I'm saying. Go mob guy. Yeah, mob guy MVP. Go. Forty five seconds to go. Canada is really tightening up their defense here and just playing a really tight diamond to keep the middle away from Nicaragua. Happy with them just passing around and burning the clock. But they do, Nicaragua does earn themselves a kick in a dangerous spot here in the corner. Doesn't really look like they've done enough with it. Nope. Twenty-one seconds, and Canada's got the ball. Credit to the Canadian player there. He tried to stay up. Another foul against Nicaragua. Nine seconds to go. Can they do something with this set piece? Can Canada get one more goal and get a two-goal cushion right here at the break? It worked for the U.S. Why not for them? Hmm, not quite enough. Not quite special enough. There's time. All right, guys, we're going to get Luke in here, uh, fix our technical difficulty. So you may see the screen go blank and just our background of the of the channel for a moment. We are still here. And then once we get that sorted out, I'm going to step away for a quick moment and leave you with the uh, capable hands of Luke and then jump right back in before halftime or sooner. Uh, so we'll get that all sorted out, and we will see you guys here shortly, okay? There we are. See, that works now. That was weird. Uh, let me see here. Make sure I run those things right. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. So you can put that on stream, yeah? N no, so... Uh, oh, let me send you the link. We're fixing stuff. You can hear us on stream. <laughs> Group scene, copy link. Okay, there we go. I'll send you the link now. So Jake, the link I sent you should be something you can paste into uh, OBS. Yeah. Is it sitting below the blue up the blue layer?
That's weird. Should be capture a group scene. Here, try it. Maybe I pasted it wrong. Is that the same link? That should be the same link. Use an OBS or other studio software to capture the group of your video mix. Yeah. You know what? I don't see us in this one. So this is wrong. Mm -mm -mm. Hold on. Fixing things, y'all. Sorry. So the director and your production, I don't think that's the right one. Here it is. Okay, I think I figured it out. Let's see if this fixes it. Yeah, let me see if this... Let's change it. Oh, I might, I might have found it. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. I think it wants to do something. Go do your thing, Jake. I'll, I'll try and fix it. Yeah, yeah.
Check, check, check. Check. Check, check. Hey, what's up, man? So are you in here? Yeah. Hey, there we go. Okay, so let's try this, pasting this into OBS and see if it works. Here we go. Hey, nice. nice. I don't know what was wrong with that room, but it was messed up. Yeah, that's strange. So where are you at on the video? Because I feel like we're off on our watch. Uh, you mean like in the live? Yeah. We are. So they're in the game? Yeah, in the game. They are just about to start the second half. Okay. We should be close. We should be close. Do we want to change this to side by side instead of top to bottom? Yeah, can it, can we change it? Are you in the producer? Yeah. I think we've done it before. I can't remember how though. If not, no big deal. Where is side by side? Are we live on the channel then? Yeah, we're live on the channel. Awesome. Okay guys, we're back. Woohoo. <laughs> Technical difficulties. The, let me update our score bug here. Second half is underway. Canada holding a narrow lead, three to two over Nicaragua. Winner of this one essentially moves on. So, a lot of implications here, guys. This is gonna be a good second half. It's gonna be a little wild, I bet. 
this Canada team, I tell you, man, it's just, it's, it's so impressive. Like these guys are the real deal. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make a shot right now. These guys are going to go deep. They're going to go deep. I could see them sneaking away with one of those semifinal slots with the, uh, with the way that they play, like the way they don't give up. I don't see why not depending they on hang, what their path ends up being. They hang in with every single team that's put in front of them. And yeah, all I don't do, think that uh, I don't think that score line from yesterday's game does them credit. No, they were definitely way closer than that game uh, score line shows. All these guys do are doing right now is learning. This yeah. squad is learning as they go. They look good. They look good. The Canada, watch out for next cycle. Canada is going to be good, really good, for sure. And yeah, here. <laughs> Just the ideas, the movement, the defense, the transition. I mean, it's not perfect from Canada, but man, they have the right ideas. You can see it. I love how quick they get reset on defense too. Like, uh, you know, that's something that's hard to teach kids when you're teaching futsal is it's not outdoor. You don't, you don't own a section of the, of the field. You have to play offense and defense. You have to play wide and narrow, long and short. Mm -hmm. there's not enough of us for you to just be camped out at the top waiting for us to get the ball back. you got to come back and help. And these guys sprint back. I love that. Love that. <laughs> I like it. Still trying to look for that side-by-side -side thing. Sorry. Oh, you're good. It is weird that it stacked it like that. I don't think it normally does it that way, does it? No, it might have been an update. I got to turn my audio back on. There we go. Yeah, like you were saying in the in the chat earlier, uh, Jake. Um, what's his name now? I want to say his name right. Que, que, Quemi? I think it's Quemi, yeah. Quemi, Quemi is a is a better version of uh, ta, ta, say the what's the American name again? Tayo. 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 Um, ta, nothing against him. He's fine, uh, and and he's not bad. I, I just think that uh, Quemi is is physical, man. He's physical. Um, just doing the job up front, like it's supposed to be done. You know what I mean? Like they're getting in the rock up top, which is that they're, they're trying to do. He holds off his player. Um, Tayo was flopping. He was on the ground. And I'm like, if you're playing big man ball, you can't go down. You can't mm -hmm. go down with a stiff breeze. You have to bang around, like punching, fighting, scrapping, pushing. That's the role. That's the job. I mean, I don't know who talked to Tayo, but like, that's the job. That's the role. I agree. You're going to be a strong Pivo. You got to be a strong Pivo. You can't do that and flop. No. The, I mean, the Americans were flopping all over. It wasn't just him. It was everyone. Yeah. Not getting any calls. And they, I mean, they did it like once, twice. Okay. You're, you're feeling out, see what call you're going to get, but like three, four, five, six, like you're not going to get the call. Stop. <clears throat> yeah. Then you start to give yourself a re reputation to the referees for the game. <sighs> Yeah, you get you're less. looking for it. Yep. He got good feet. He's got good feet too. Quemi got good feet. Ooh, nice little turn and shot there. Oh there wow. Have. Now I'm a little bit behind you. Okay, good. We're about synced up. <laughs> Are we? Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll try not to spoil anything. No, you're like literally a split second. <laughs> Uh, another player from Canada I'm impressed with. I'm going to brag on Canada. I don't care. Um, oh, Jelab. Be their keeper twice. Jelab. Madi. Number 13 right there. Yes. I think he Kid's plays good. for Sporty Montreal. Kid's good. Kid is yeah. good. He's very good in the Sporty Montreal matches for the semifinal and the final. Yeah. His, his work rate is high. He, uh, 
his impact on the court is felt whether he has the ball or not. Mm -hmm. He's just creating some kind of pressure just with his presence at all times, which is really cool. Got a hand to this Nicaragua team, though. They are not calling it quits. No. No, they're really not. And, um, you know, the fans behind them as well has got to be giving them some extra energy, I would imagine. Right. And imagine this tournament in, a, uh, in an arena in Canada, like a hockey arena, converted for futsal. Right. I'm sure you could – I mean that kind of stuff happens all the time. I know you know it's possible. Imagine yeah, they, like Toronto or Montreal hosting something like this, or a place like Dallas, like in like for example the arena that the Mavericks are in or something, and filling that place could be very interesting. Right. Canada has the infrastructure, infrastructure for this. this. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And there's plenty of smaller arenas within the United States that would. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Picks up his own deflection. Little bit of buffer now for Canada. They are at four to two. 1653 left in the second half. So there's a lot of time in this game. But look at that. Squeaks it under the Nicaraguan goalkeeper and is there to tap the rest of the way in. And smart to do so. Didn't wait Good for that ball stuff. to take care of itself. The movement, the passing, come on. Yeah. Come on. Daniel Shamale, number 11. Shamale. Shamalama. Not <laughs> Timothy Shamale. Daniel Shamale. What's that kid's name? That, that Dune kid? Wasn't that Timothy Shamale? It might have been, actually. <laughs> so bad at those actor names. <laughs> Ooh, that's a bad tackle, homie. I really want to know how to pronounce that guy's last that guy's name. Jeleb, 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 Madi, Madi Jeleb. I know I'm butchering it. Sorry. <laughs> Speaking no, of which. You know, I'm looking at the over the roster for Canada. I see a lot of. I'm I'm guessing now. Don't don't uh, don't call me out and cancel me on this. But I'm seeing a lot of it, what it looks like is refugee. I saw, um, I think some like uh, on a goal celebration there was a Muslim praying to the east. You know, I mm -hmm. think there is some. I think there is some some uh, some refugee community. When I think. Uh... A lot of these players are from Sporting Montreal, where there is a big community of them there. Really? I believe so. Again, don't cancel us. I don't know that 100%, but for some reason. Uh, we're guessing. I, we're guessing. <laughs> I, someone has. Oh. What a save. Did he save it with his face? I think he did. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Not the first time we've seen that this tournament. Uh, yeah. I think that hit him in the, head, the side of the head. To me, this is uh, this is playing for a uh, break. This is playing for shift in momentum. Yeah, maybe feeling like Nicaragua was a little too high pressure there, and slow this no game way. down. There's no way he's heard from that. No way. I felt like it hit his hand first. have to back up and look at that replay again. We may have gotten to a little bit of a neck next week. Ah. You want a water for him? It looks like it looks <laughs> like they're gonna let him keep playing. A little bit of water, I'll feel better. Yeah, I just need some of that magic water. My daughter always asks for rainbow water. Oh yeah. That but makes first of all, better. what is that? <laughs> It's what makes you feel better. Yeah. Oof. Oh, boy. Nicaragua not phased no. by the break. <laughs> well, 
one thing I wanted to point out is uh, a, a strategy from Nicaragua. I noticed that uh, on those substitutions, the guy coming off the bench takes the penny off, hands it off to the player coming on, and then goes onto the court. Just to be safe. Yeah, as opposed to uh, running on there with the penny on. <laughs> and then going, oh, yeah, I'm not supposed to be wearing this. And now it's an illegal substitution because we're both standing staring at each other on the court. Wow. Ugh. From Marathi of all people. Yeah, like he w- the last guy to expect it from is the guy that's like the, the with the most futsal experience, but probably the me- least amount of subs, being a starting goalkeeper. Well, that, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> it was the substitution thing. Yeah, he's not used to the substitute stuff. He's got to know how to fly sub sub though. There, there's no way. Yeah, I wonder if they just sat him too long and he forgot he was wearing it compared <laughs> to like uh, we're flying the sub, so I'll come and go, flying the keeper. Yeah. No, it was just uh, a lapse in uh, thinking there for him. I mean, we're only human. Yeah. Not mad at him for it, but man, was it frustrating considering everything else that was going on at the time. Right. Couldn't have been worse timing. Never good timing for a red card, but. It's just in those moments, you, you, you do. You expect a lot from your veterans, and that's why you bring them. Right. That's why, that's why yesterday I was so hard on Luciano for the way he was playing. Right. You're a veteran futsal player, not arena lead. soccer player. Yeah. Futsal player. Yeah, lead these guys. Lead by and by example, please. Right. Right. Not enough to be out there just screaming and waving your arms around. Here we come. Three on two. Today. Oh. <sighs> I, oh I it's a foul. Are they going to give a rolling foul on that, you think? I don't know. They would have called it, it right it, there. It. Oh. Oh, I unplugged. There we go. All right. I'll unplug my headphones for a second. <laughs> I'm so fidgety. I'm not used to sitting for this long. Right. It's a lot. It is. When are they? When do you think uh, Nicaragua get a little bit desperate here? I mean, we're only in the 14th minute, but what do you do? You, I mean, in the tournament, do you take a chance, pull your keeper, or do you just keep doing what you're doing? Uh, if I'm Nicaragua, we've come back twice already. Um, our intensity is good. Our work rate is good. I don't think I'm quite ready to fly the keeper. Because the consequence of it, if it fails, is just going to bury us at this point. Sure. So I don't think I do it this early. And I think I'm still confident in my guys. I, I would. That's the other thing is you almost send a message with that flying goalkeeper to your guys. So you're not confident they can do it on their own. Right. I'm not sure I want them to feel that way just yet, that it's desperation hour. Because this is a – there's a lot of time left in the match. I don't want them panicking and sprinting everywhere or – mentally getting in a funk because they don't, I don't know. I think there's a lot more to it than just the extra player there, depending on what you change mentality wise with your players. Right. Plus this Canada side looks lethal. I don't know if I'd mess with them. I don't, I don't think I would tempt them. No, I wouldn't uh, just yet. You know, we get down into like minute six. We're down by two. I'm starting to say, okay, maybe someone should put a a yellow Jersey on or something. Be ready. And that's kind of a comment in and of itself, Jake, is that, you know, um, it tends to be that the Vogue way of playing futsal nowadays is a lot of flying goalkeeper, not not a sub, but actually the goalkeeper coming up and playing similar to a Miguel Cervantes or something like that. Um, yeah. Confident teams just playing, like just kind of switching things up, switching tempos up, switching the aggression up switching up possession, just kept keeping the other team on their toes. We haven't seen a lot of that in this tournament. I'm kind of surprised. Um, but I, I think you're going to, I think, you know, when we get over to the World Cup or some of these other nations that are more futsal savvy, I think we will see a lot more of that. I think so too. I think uh, goalkeepers have been underutilized on the court this tournament so far in the group stage. Even even to pass back to, to really pressure, we haven't seen much of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, boy. <gasps> That's a goal. 
Yeah, the yes, he's calling That's it. That's a goal. That's a goal. It is a goal. Canada again. That went over the line for sure. Uh, Did he not he not call a goal? Uh, oh no. Shitty camera angle for that. No, no, no. no he way. got it. He saved it. Wow. Good for him. That camera angle is like the worst possible angle yeah. for that. Yeah. This guy got some got some handles over there. Number 14 on Nicaragua. He got yeah. some handles. He we'll really does. Some, we'll give him some credit and give, mention him by name. Nicaragua. Keep losing my rosters. 14. Pal uh, Palacios Alvarez. Franklin Palacios Alvarez. Franklin. Twelve hmm. thirty-five to go. Still 4-2 after an amazing goal line save by the keeper that looks pretty in. Oi, 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 oi. Almost had a date with the uh, referee <laughs> table there. <laughs> what game was that in the NFPL where that referee got wiped out? Uh, Brusa oh. versus New Mexico, I think. <laughs> fourth, like a player slid through the table and a fourth official went flying. <laughs> had to stop the game to make sure she was okay. That was brutal. Like you're sitting there minding your own business. You're the fourth official. You know you're yeah. just basically score clock at that point, and making sure the benches are doing what they're supposed to do. I don't even think. I think she was in training. I don't even think she was like technically a, an official for the game. Right. She stayed at that score table the whole time. Oh man. And yeah, she just got a, obliterated <laughs> by a folding table halfway WWE. <laughs> Oh, he almost saved it. Oh, that was a hell of an close. effort. I'm loving this Canada side. I really am. I know. They're entertaining. They're really sticking with this combo here with... Uh, um, God, um, I, I can never remember how to pronounce his name. Quemi. Quemi. Yeah. Uh, and there, Yassine Saad has been, has been on there quite a bit. Uh, and then Chalamet. Chalamet has been playing quite a bit as well. Corner kick for Nicaragua here. This may be their defensive set team. Speaking of which, they just pulled off Kwame. Kwame. Hmm. And the effort is just so impressive. Playing till the whistle. Yes. Not, They're still uh, flying. Not They're begging still... for a foul or a call that isn't there. Like, just all around yeah. good from Canada. So professional. It's the 11, 11 minutes in the second, second half. half. They're, They're still, still flying. flying. Yeah, it looks like they're fresh. Like, it's the first couple minutes. Oh, I really oh, question it. There's a lapse. What a great goal. Great futsal play by Nicaragua there. There's our boy Franklin Palacios dropping dimes. Man, look at that. Great little play here. Finds his man on the touchline. Gets the ball right back and cool as a cucumber. Says back post, please. Cha-ching. It's a great like play. It. So tough to defend when done right. Yeah, really. Wesley Ruiz is the goal scorer. So it's a one-goal game again. This is a good game. This is why I didn't think Nicaragua needed to panic. I mean, are right. they 
are they looking super potent? No, but the but the strategy is working. They're finding opportunity, even if it's not good. They're finding it. I'm the coach. I said, okay, I think I let this ride and let Canada make a mistake. Going back to when we're talking about fitness of Canada, I really am calling into question the fitness of, of the U.S. team. Really, really questioning it. Yeah, me too. Especially after today. They look gassed. They don't look like they play a full game. Well, and the conditions are not favorable to a team that's not uh, conditioned for this. It's mm -hmm. an open-air arena. It's upper 90s to 100 degrees every day. And so if you're going to get gas set quick, and then they've got that heat on top of it, just pushing through the building there. They got no excuse. Canada's doing it. Man, it's colder in Canada. Yeah, true. I wonder if this evening air is helping the uh, the arena at all. Mm, that's a good shout. If they're on the coast, it definitely cooled off. Because everywhere you see black behind the stands here, that's the street. It's it's during those daytime games, you can see all the cars lined up there, and you can see traffic going up and down the road. Right. And I so talked to Otto, and he said it's it's open across the bottom. It's all it, just it's like on the air. coast, so they're definitely going to get a sea breeze, which definitely cools things off at night. No, excuse me, that's a lake. Holy moly, that is a big lake lake right there managua right is the name of the city yeah managua nicaragua managua nicaragua 84 degrees right now it's warm it was 94 at the top of the day so about a 10 degree weather change from this afternoon to this evening that's quite a bit yeah yeah that's fair but still the canadians are showing way better they just look they just look so much better. Yeah. You know, in every way. Yes. Severe weather alert. Excessive heat. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> look at that back post run by look at that back post run by seven. They scored it, but still wow. that guy ran from the back court. Two goal cushions this back. This guy's a beast. Clemmy is a beast. Let's watch that again. Look at him fight. Yes. That that's another thing too that goes back to comparing to the US and the flopping and stuff. They would have never got that shot off the US. No. He is and Clemmy just plays so strong. The whole team, all of Canada has played that way this entire tournament so far. Is mm -hmm. they get knocked down, they roll through it and keep going. They're looking for the cumulative foul instead of just the stoppage of play for the foul, and they're doing it right. And 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 uh, I know I, I was more impressed with the back post run from Mbocha because that's what I was watching. I watched him start the playoff from where he is right now. He's at over there, number seven, Canada back court. He played that ball into Kweme and ran to the back post the whole way. Wow, that's just and he was wide impressive. open, and he was wide open. This is the stuff that we don't see from the U.S. team. When you think about the Canadian futsal scene, and Here we go again. Look at the dot. Look at him and Bocha doing again. When you think about the Canadian futsal scene, and they're kind of in the same boat as us, right? It's these amateur leagues, semi-pro mm -hmm. leagues. Mm -hmm. It's it's fractured because of the geographic challenges of the size of the country, and this is a difference in talent that's light years ahead of the United States with professional players from arena soccer that get paid to play the game. Yeah. It says a lot about, number one, the practice of futsal and its benefits, and two, the practice of U.S. soccer and refusing to embrace it, particularly in futsal tournaments. Do you feel like, um, number one? No, not uh, an ad now, please. Oh, no. Oh, I'll wait till the play's over. No, go ahead. I did, no, I've got an ad. I can't see it. So you can do whatever you want. Nothing happened. You're good. Okay. Um, <laughs> number one, 
I mean, this is pretty obvious because we've shouted about this. Does does indoor soccer lend towards lazy play? I, guess, I can guess your answer. But number two, these guys playing in a subpar league. I mean, MASL is not the greatest of leagues. It's, it's fine, but it's not the greatest of leagues. You have the soccers and a few others that are good. But does does these do does these guys getting paid a wage playing a lazy game add to or compound the issues that the that the Americans are suffering from right now? A bunch of kind of prima donnas who think they are good, they're not really, and they're getting paid. So they again it, it compounds the issue of them, you know, playing a little bit, a lot of it, lazy. And and to me, you you see a hungry Canada team right here that's probably not getting paid anything to play football. Yeah, I think, um, I, you know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I won't say that I think that they're playing lazy in arena soccer. I think that the pace is just different, and so they're not used to futsal pace. Um, okay. And that's giving them a massive benefit of the doubt. My heart tells me, no, they're lazy. But uh, if, I, if I had to be uh, – <laughs> I think that really it's just the fact that indoor soccer perpetuates a much different pace, which is much slower like the outdoor game. And because the game allows for sloppy play, like passes off of boards, shots that go off the boards and come back, but then there's no sense of urgency that is required in futsal. Mm -hmm. There's a certain sense of quick decision-making intelligent quick decision making that our team clearly lacks yeah and it really showed against the dominican republic when we're just ripping shots towards goal with no real thought or purpose we get get into their third and we just rip it Mm -hmm. there's no back wall guys and i think it out of bounds i would be really interested if someone could somehow magically come up with the stats of how many goals in the MASL are scored off of a rebound off the wall from a shot, an errant shot? Yeah, I'd be curious too. Because I often see highlights from MASL when they're recommended in my algorithm. I don't see it a ton because I don't click into them. I'm not interested. <laughs> uh, but um, when I do see them, I'd say probably 40 to 50% of the highlights I see are coming off of a deflection. Or there's mm-hmm. a pass off the boards. Mm-hmm. When do you ever do that in outdoor? You don't. You don't. Futsal forces you to make outdoor decisions in a much faster pace. That's why it's a developmental game. These arena soccer guys get to play sloppy and get rewarded for it yeah. based on the nature of arena soccer. There's no punishment for making a sloppy pass into towards goal. Yep. Like, like you said, firing shots, that's not punished. It just bounces off the wall. Ooh, tough challenge, both directions. Wow, they're letting a lot go. <laughs> wow, yeah, holy cow. Seven minutes to go, it's go time. Both teams still pull... playing for that final spot. Goalie's coming up, here comes the goalie. See, at this point, I'm starting to think about either my keeper himself needs to come up, or I need a flying keeper. Two goals left inside of seven minutes. I want to at least start thinking about it. I feel um, more confident with these Canadian rotations too. I think they have a better rotation. I feel like they do. And uh, it seems like they're, they have a couple of lines of Mm -hmm. guys that are familiar with each other. Mm -hmm. And it shows. Yeah. Goes in the way that they confidently enter the, and exit the court. They know that the guy next to him knows them just as well as they know him. Yeah, I'm not having very much confidence in who Huerson's, whatever his name is, uh, his lines. They felt dis, disjointed and kind of just random. The yellow. Well, can you blame them? I mean, what's been happening in play? I mean, hmm. after all that other stuff, I'm surprised that's the yellow. 
yeah that's what that's what happened yeah interesting call yeah yeah to your point i agree the lines just feel very disjointed and you know the other part of the problem is is you have some futsal players mixed in with these arena soccer guys Mm -hmm. they're wanting to play a certain kind of way because of their muscle memory right and it doesn't match up with the majority of our roster right i think that's why like i think about luciano specifically like he looks like he wants to do something and can't yeah today Yesterday he looked lazy, but watching him today, I started to think like, I wonder if, I wonder if he doesn't have the confidence in the rest of these confidence in the rest of these guys. Goal. Nice goal. I wonder if he feels like he doesn't have the confidence in the rest of these guys to follow him and do the right futsal play. Well, he's scared to leave. He's scared to move because if you can't trust your other player just completely losing their marbles and running all over the court, then yeah, I wouldn't be feeling confident to move that ball nice shot good stuff. good stuff i don't think that nicaraguan nicaraguan defender on the goal line saw it till too late that's pretty late reaction no, to kind no, of poke no, a foot no. away at it time out nicaragua want this there yeah this uh it looks like Third place is USA. So if this holds, my PDF. Where'd you get that PDF at? Uh, if you go to Concacaf uh-huh. and look at the schedule, if you scroll all the way down where the sponsors are, yeah, there's actually a PDF version that tells you. Um, here I'll send it to you. It actually tells you like who the, who's placed where. Oh, I see. I, I got it. I got it. Canada should, if this holds, would be third B. Yeah, so this actually pushes the United States for sure into the hands of Panama for the quarterfinal. If I'm reading it right, which is possible I'm not. So we finished second in Group C, huh? Third. Oh, really? Yeah, because... Uh, so 3C? Yeah, it should be 3C versus... Um, 1A? 1A, yeah, I think that's... Which should be Costa Rica, right? Yeah. Yeah, or I mean, no, no, no. Um, so it's either 3B or 3C. So since the best third place team will come out of Group B, that means 3C gets bumped down to that match 20. And that's why we're facing Panama. Okay. Because otherwise, so one... otherwise Canada and Panama would play each other again just coming out of the group stage. Okay. So Canada will face... Costa Rica right off the rip. Ouch. They'll be a good game to watch. They may have a hard time making it to that semi because that's going to be a tall mountain to climb. It'll It'll be entertaining entertaining for sure. sure. Canada will will put up a fight. Definitely. Definitely. So is Canada going to win this group? No, they'll get third. Really? Yeah, so as it stands right now, um oh man. So going into this game, yeah, that's such a crappy job updating their site. Cuba was at two points going into today, and they beat yeah. Panama. Okay. Panama was already locked into first, so that didn't hurt them. But then Cuba got a total of five points. So okay. they're untouchable from either of these teams for the second place spot. But since Nicaragua and Canada both have a point on a tie, 
the only team mathematically that they can match or beat is the United States. They can match that score tally, that points tally, or uh, they can beat Suriname because they'll only have three points. So the be- the third place team from Group A is not going to make it through no matter what tonight, unless these two will magically tie in the next four and a half minutes. So Canada will leapfrog Nicaragua into third in this group. Correct. United States sits at third. You got Guatemala, Dominican Republic, then United States in yeah. Group C. Panama, because Cuba, they won against Canada. Trinidad, they've had the most points through all this as a third place team. Yeah. Nicaragua flying their keeper, flying somebody, not their keeper. Yes, that's an attacker. I like where they're placing him, disrupting that middle. Canada's hyped. Oh, yeah, they're excited. Mexico looked pretty good this this uh, this tournament. I'm wondering when they come yeah. up against a t- stiff competition, what they're going to do. Well, and they don't have the worst. Uh, uh, well, they got Guatemala, I think. No, yeah, Guatemala. And then Dominican Republic will face Cuba to wrap up the night on Wednesday. The other thing too is. Uh, Cuba, or I mean, uh, excuse me, Mexico had in the last CONCACAF championship, I think they didn't win a game and didn't make it out of their group. They look way Oof. better this year than they yeah, did three years ago. Way better. Very, uh, very different team. Another country that's recently started to see some futsal infrastructure prop up. Yep. Still dealing with football rapid, though, but. Yeah. Salvador. That's another one we don't see this year that we saw uh, three years ago. Ooh, just Ooh, missed. Ooh, that was close. Goodness. <laughs> you don't quite see the dominance from Costa Rica you did three years ago. No. No. They were just blasting people until they got to the knockouts. Yeah. But I mean that's a, that's a testament to the the growth of futsal in the Central American region and North American region. True. Three v one could have been. Wow. This has been some game. Two minutes so West, to go. Wesley Ruiz in the keeper kit, the goal scorer. Oof. Oh, we got a free kick. Dangerous place as well. Yeah. Off the ball. That's pretty soft. A little surprised by that.
Good play. Yeah. On both sides. Well, well structured set piece, good defense. Speaking of one more thing we didn't see from the US. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It's a long list. It's a long list. That's a foul. This ref, I don't know what he's looking at. I'm kind of surprised. Oh, strange calls. Minute 15 to go. It's looking like Canada's going to hold on. Sure does. I mean, uh, erasing a three-goal deficit at this point is going to be tough. Right. Take a complete collapse from Canada. It really would. Take a United States-level collapse. <laughs> <laughs> we're, I promise we're U.S. fans. I promise. I know it's hard to tell. <laughs> Less than a minute to go. Just hold, boys, hold. Yeah, just. Oh, they want more. They want more. Ooh, you almost got it. Ooh, boy. Again, Canada's not stop. Like no. here, we got them up by three, and they are not stopping what they do. Their defense is offense. Yeah. Thirty seconds to go. Nicaragua decides they're going to take a breather. Like letting their fifth attacker get involved, and then he immediately gives the ball away. Wow. Nah, Nicaragua and your night is done. Yeah, that wasted way too much time. Mm -hmm. It's over. Especially, especially with an errant pass. Yeah, that's not going to cut it. Yeah, they're saying they're going to face Costa Rica. They are, okay. They just said I don't that. have my commentary on, so. Hey, subscriber. Let's go. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I wonder who subbed. Thank you for the sub. Yeah, thank you very much, mystery subscriber. Gonna try and see if I can find it. Canada officially wins the match. What a gutsy performance! What a great performance! They should be so proud of their accomplishment here. This is incredible. Good stuff. Wow. Again, next cycle, I really think you're gonna see a really sharp Canada team. Especially if they keep doing what they're doing within the country. It seems like futsal people are taking care of futsal at a domestic level. They got a great, um, got a couple of really impressive referees out of uh, different areas of their country as well. For me, I know their stuff. Um, yeah, good things happening uh, in Canada. That's awesome. I'm glad to see that happen. Well deserved. Really, really cool. cool. Great, great performance. performance. Great, great game. game. Some great, Some great players, players out there. Out there. Both, both, on, both, on, for, both Nicaragua for Nicaragua and, and for, for, um, um, for, for Canada. Good old, good old Frankie, Frankie out there, out there putting, putting in work, work for, Nicaragua. for Nicaragua. Really, really appreciate, appreciate him. him. Yeah. Yeah, that was a very impressive uh, Nicaraguan side as well, fighting through a lot of adversity, being down several times throughout the tournament and not giving up. Did, Did uh, So, so Nicaragua's bounced out now. Uh, yes, they are officially done. Okay. Nicaragua gets knocked out. Suriname is officially knocked out. Haiti was knocked out already. And Trinidad was knocked out already. So we see Guatemala, USA, Dominican Republic, Panama, Cuba, and Canada, Mexico, and Costa Rica round out the, in no particular order, round out the quarterfinals. So hopefully. Conquer Calf updates that in the morning. We can get some official draws here right. on the schedule. Make sure they didn't change anything. So the third place teams that go through 
are Canada and United States. Yes. Okay. There you go. Wonderful stuff. Yeah, good stuff. All right, really guys. fun to watch. Yeah, really fun. Well, our next stream will be on Wednesday. We'll catch the last quarterfinal game, which will be at uh, 6 p.m. local time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I believe that's Dominican Republic versus Cuba, but we'll wait for CONCACAF to confirm that. Once I do, I'll make a little uh, scheduled stream so you guys can tune in if you'd like and set some reminders. Um, appreciate everyone that popped in today. Really uh, been enjoying doing this with you guys. I hope you guys are enjoying it too. Uh, sound off in the chat next time. Let us know you're there. Tell us what you think about what's going on in the tournament. And we'll uh, we'll continue to bring some content in the meantime and should have a regular video out soon as well. So keep an eye out for that. Well, from uh, from Luke and I, everybody have a really good night. And we'll see you later this week. See you Wednesday. See you guys.